Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is our uh, day we have our church picnic, which will follow the service. All are welcome to come up to Camp Harding uh, after our services uh, for our annual church picnic. Um, we're going to be at the Pavilion Number One. For those who are not familiar with Camp Harding, it's up on Peckinville Road. Um, to me, Camp Harding is one of those best kept secrets of all the county parks. It's one of, to me, it's one of the prettiest parks um, that we have in the county. Uh, you, know, you know, Devil's Backbone County Park is pretty, but um, Camp Harding is really nice, and so you're all welcome to that. We're at the first pavilion uh, on the right as you come into the park, and we have the pavilion all day. So if you want to stay there till late and do whatever you want to do, um, you can do that. <clears throat> Just a couple of things I want to uh, highlight on um, the announcements that are in your scripture insert. Um, next week is going to be a high, high mass Sunday. We have two baptisms. Little Joe and Eli are being baptized. Uh, little Joe, I'm talking about you. <laughs> next week's your big day, and Eli, uh, his, they're both going to be baptized next week. It's going to be a, one of those, call you the red letter days of the church when you do a baptism, and we have two. Um, baptisms next week and it's going to be a very exciting day for that one of the things that's not in your um, announcements um, AA we are going to begin in November uh, hosting a local AA um, meeting group here at St. Andrews they will meet on Thursday evenings I don't have the times yet um, but I just met with the gentleman this, this morning actually he was here um, very interesting um, conversation, and, and this gentleman, it's, uh, he said, we have no bosses in AA, he's just he's coordinator, and it's pretty interesting um, about AA to start with, Alcoholics Anonymous, and, and it's how all this came about was really the work of the Holy Spirit among us. Um, we started talking, uh, started talking to people in the diocese about our um, capital campaign, campaign to be handicapped accessible, and Somebody did not know much about us. I said, well, what else do you use your building for? And, and I told him and about the, the Clear Spring Recovery, the flood, how we use that. And he said, well, do you have any other outside groups to come into St. Andrews? And I said, well, that's open to anybody who wants to come in. He said, well, how about AA? Do you have an AA group? And the timing of that was so powerful because I had already received a phone call like a day before if we wanted to be a location for AA. And it's just the work of the Holy Spirit. So um, beginning probably the first Thursday in November, we are going to be a location for um, a local chapter of AA. And the coordinator lives here in Clear Spring and right down the street. So that's really exciting that we're going to do that. So I think that's it. I know, Elizabeth, you have a couple things. Um, we have a sickness in the congregation. Um, one of them uh, is, uh, well, we've had sickness among the people in the congregation. Here's Eli. Eli, we were just talking about you. You want to come up on camera? Uh, but anyway, um, we have sickness going on among us. Um, Beth, my daughter-in-law, our Sunday school teacher, had plans um, to be here and for the picnic. She has strep, and she's a school teacher, so she has to be in bed rest and uh, be ready to go, hopefully by tomorrow. So she's kind of like quarantined. Um, but anyway, so just be careful. There's some sickness going around. Um, Chuck works in Washington, D.C., and I think uh, there's germ warfare going on down in Washington, D.C. because him and Patty got it. And it's all your fault, Chuck. <laughs> so anyway, he's a character. But we will have some games and things up at the picnic and uh, enjoy. Uh, Elizabeth, you have a couple things. I do things. have a couple things. Um, I'm hoping that the picnic can also talk about the pork and sauerkraut dinner and get a chance. Um, rat and knives. We had a fundraiser for rat and knives last year and I had a request that we do it again. So I got some pamphlets over there and think um, orders and all and I'm hoping that we can get the any money that we raise for that to our handicap um, addition. Uh, Front walk jar is still over there. Please if you can put some money in that. And um, oh I gotta tell you last weekend was my fall open house and I had people coming in, running in, asking if there was soup in the barn. For those who don't understand that, the ladies do uh, refreshments and, and soup, soup and sandwiches and stuff for my Christmas open house. 
and everyone thought it was this for this open house. So that really, I think people were expecting them to come and not uh, get a lot of right. that Christmas time. And one of the ladies, that, one of the ladies that came to your open house, um, she actually came to the open house up at Woodmont. She said, "Next time, do three times as much soup." She showed up for soup, and they say they, they showed up at her open house down at Miller's Farmstead, and they walked in, and they said, "Where's the soup?" And they turned around and left. The soup is not yeah. here. No soup for you. No soup for you. Um, so I think those are the, the things. Oh, and uh, AA. Uh, just getting back to AA. Um, the gentleman said to me this morning, they like to take a collection, and he said, do you want rent? I said, no, we don't want rent. I said, this is part of the outreach. He said, but what we're going to do, um, we do take a, a collection, and a part of what you're going to receive, um, I said, for our capital campaign for our handicap accessibility, so we're going to receive uh, some donations from AA towards our handicap accessibility. So, I think it's it, so let's get ready to move on. Go.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthy magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and tasks for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid for her household when it snows, for all her household are clothed in crimson. She makes herself coverings. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the city gates, taking his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She supplies the merchant with sashes. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her happy. Her husband too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share in the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the city gates. The word of the Lord. On the 17th Sunday after Pentecost, we will read possibly by half verse Psalm 1. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the sorrowful. Their delight is 
and hold the law of the Lord. And they can't save our and us. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like shaft which is with the Lord's way. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes. Nor the sinner in the house of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of righteousness. But the way of the wicked is doomed. Standing among you. Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, and devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But wisdom from above is first pure then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do you not come from your cravings that they are war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly, in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying, and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. Name the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our, our reading today from St. Mark deals with some petty issues. We deal with arguing. And we deal with power. And so some say, well, power is not really a petty issue. Well, and a lot of times it's not, but it can be a petty issue. So what were you arguing about before we come to church today? Don't, it's a rhetorical question. I don't need to hear it. What were you arguing about? I know somebody was arguing about something before they came to church today. Were you arguing about, do we have to go? But you might have been arguing about something before you came to church today. And how can you argue when you know that you're going to receive the sacrament? You're coming to worship God's house. How can you argue on a day like today? How can you be upset that whatever time you left your house, that I'm going to be in God's house? How can you argue? How can you be in a bad mood? As I tell people, whatever is going through your mind or whatever upsets you, keep it outside the door. This is God's house. This is a place of happy, happy, happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I watched Duck Dynasty too. <laughs> Can't you tell? <laughs> but I can tell when people are arguing. And I know we all can do this. We can tell when somebody's arguing. As I gave my, my youngest son, who's now a trooper, some words of wisdom from a retired trooper, watch the hands. They're what's going to hurt you. Don't watch the eyes. Watch the hands. The eyes will point to something, but watch the hands. Well, when somebody's arguing, watch their hands or watch their head. <laughs> Or you can drive, say, drive to the mall and out the parking lot, and somebody, you know, I don't have a, of course, somebody's got a cell phone, but I'll take one of these St. Andrew's Episcopal stickers and say this is a cell phone. You can tell when somebody is arguing by a distance because, first of all, whoever they're arguing with must hear their hand because you know it's going like this. <laughs> and like that. And it's like, okay, the person on the line is going to hear that hand. And then you can tell when the arguing is over, well, Remember when you had the telephone with the 30-foot cord? Because if you had a 30-foot cord on your phone in the house, you were it. <laughs> Renee, you still have one? <laughs> you were it. Because after you got done arguing on the phone with somebody, you had to do this. Unwrap the cord. Right? And that, that's right. Or those who still have flip phones, you can tell when the argument's over because you see this. Anybody still have a flip? Okay. And then you can tell another one the argument's over if somebody's got an iPhone and they don't, really don't care because when they get done, it's like this. They flip it, okay? There you can tell arguments are going on. Right? Okay. And we're on track. So we started out with happy, 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 and then we, then we just threw our, our iPhone somewhere. So we can tell when people are upset about something. 
there's different interpretations of the Greek about, well, they weren't arguing, they were having a conversation. So the next time you get in an argument with your significant other to say, well, I'm going to use the Greek, I was just having a conversation with you and I wasn't arguing with you, I'll use the Greek interpretation. Then we have power. Then we got power. So Jesus said, what are you arguing about? He's already told him again what's going to happen to him. And what are they arguing about? Well, hey, he's going to be greater. They don't get it. They don't get it. Like, say, if you're coming here on a Sunday morning and, and something happens and you think, you know, you're not thinking about receiving the sacrament and coming in and worshiping with other like-minded Christians. You start getting upset about something. Just like them, they, they hear that he's going to die. He tells them this is the second time. And what are they? They're not talking about, oh, Jesus. How dare that happen? They're saying, who's going to be the greatest? Two, two short um, things I'm trying to find some information to tie into arguing and power. Back at the beginning of the 20th century, Chile and Argentina were getting ready to come to war. It was around about 1904, they were getting ready to come to war. As most wars are, it's over some property or it's over a, a property dispute or something. They were getting ready to come to war. So, the, um, a Monsignor, Roman Catholic Monsignor, I'm not sure if he's from Chile or Argentina, I, had to, I can't remember. He approaches um, the current Pope and says, listen, I think I got an idea. And the Pope and their correspondent, and they, the Pope was concerned about it as well. So they had, there was a, it's called, it's there now, it's called Christ Redeemer of the Andes. It's a statue. It's not as tall as the one in, in Rio de Janeiro. It's not that tall, but it's about, I don't know, I'm not much on math, but it's, it's big. <laughs> it's big, but it's not as big as one. But it's made out of bronze. So they were going to take and figure how we'll stop this war, start, stop this argument. If we have a statue of Christ, it's going to stop this argument. And it really worked out good in the beginning. It worked out good for this, this statue of Christ. I've seen it. And it's up on top of the mountain, 12,000 feet. You can only go there during the, the months when there's not snow. The road goes up to it. And it's a picture of Christ holding um, a cross. Went really well. Well, that argument started. Guess what the argument started over? With any statue, it's got to face one way or the other, right? It's got to face one way or the other. And this is a statue that wasn't on a, a thing to turn around. Chile argued that the statue of Christ had his back to them and not to the Argentinas. So they argued over that. So, so a reporter, here's what he said. To stop a war, not because of, you know, this started the argument, but to stop a war because the statue was facing the wrong way. So the reporter wrote, said, well, look at it this way. Yes, the statue has his back to Chile, but he's always got to keep his eye on Argentina. So that stopped that war. So Christ always has to keep his eye out on Argentina. So that stopped an argument. Petty. Very petty. Then we talk about power, and we go in and Christ just talks about power and takes a little child, and picks up a little child in this house, picks up a little child. And my grandson's not here yet. Uh, like I say, there's illness. I hope he does arrive. But a lot of times when I pick up my grandchild, Liam, he loves to go up towards the altar. And you know he loves to point. He likes to point to the stained glass window. He loves to point to the altar. He loves pointing up that way. So Christ picks up a little child to symbolize how power is not supposed to be. Came up another example. During one of the um, Rose Bowl parades, a float stopped running during the parade. And we're talking about power, a lot of power. Well, what happened was this float, I'm not a float builder, but I know I watched the Rose Bowl parade somewhere. There's a motor that runs these things, right? And somebody's down there hidden underneath something and looking through flower petals and driving this thing down the street. It stopped running and it held up the parade. And guess what happened? It ran out of gas. But guess who the sponsor for the float was? An oil company. <laughs> An oil company was charging this float 
And out of all their power, they overlooked one little thing. They forgot to put the gas in the gas tank. So don't we take and argue over things that really don't matter? And don't we put a lot of power in things that really, when it comes down to it, really doesn't matter? You know, we always, we all would like to get back to the time when we were sitting in Sunday school in church and little kids and we were that age and being back in that age because we would come to church and we would just come to worship or we'd come to sit for parents. We would come to worship. We didn't come into church, well, maybe if we had a sibling, we were arguing over, um, I don't know, Rod, what would you argue over as a sibling? A piece of bacon? <laughs> French toast? Right. Well, I remember, I remember after church always having uh, the church organist give us a, uh, a dime to go get a 16 bottle, uh, bottle of Pepsi at Harry Strzok's out on Pennsylvania Avenue. I think it was 10 cents. And then, and then I'll take it back and I get the nickel back. My mom wasn't happy one time I tried to make change in the collection plate. <laughs> that doesn't happen. <laughs> Wouldn't it like to be great if it was like that and we could come and worship and be a family and just. You know, we're, we're not arguing over about anything. One of the things I share with people now is that I want to stop, start pushing more and more of the issues that divide us out of my life. I want to, I'm going to focus on the sacrament. I tell people that I don't like front page ministry. And they'll say, well, what's that mean? What's front page ministry? I don't think we should be doing, this is my personal opinion, not anything wrong with somebody who does front page ministry, but I don't want to be doing my ministry on the front page of the paper of what's going on in the world. We can deal with that out there. We can deal with our prayers outside those doors. We can deal with that out there. I want us to focus on the sacrament. I want us to focus on important things that's in our life together as Christians. I want us to focus on the word of God. I want us to focus on being Christians. I want us to focus on our own destiny. I want us to focus on what's going to happen next week. We have two baptisms. I think that's most that's really important. We need to focus on our own lives and focus on how our lives are going to make other people's lives different. It doesn't mean that we have to do something for them. It doesn't mean we have to do something special for them or it doesn't mean we have to get involved in a cause. Just lead our lives to that our lives can be an example for other people to make me follow. As St. Francis said, you know, when all else fails, use words. Use words. This is what it's about. Yes, we are in a terrible time. But when was the world never really been in a terrible time? We're living in, we're seeing what's going on. I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to do any front page ministry. But we are living in a terrible time. But when have we never been in a terrible time in this world? When have we never been in a terrible time since, as I say, we got kicked out of the Garden of Eden? Our life as Christians, our life as Christians, is for us to work to get back into the Garden. And it's probably not going to be in our lifetime, but it'll be in our eternal lifetime that we will be back, be back in that Garden as Christ, as God tended, intended it to be. As God intended it to be. In the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Continues with the Nazi Creed, page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that has seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God of God. Light from light, true God from true God, may God not be of one being.
he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in order to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, and his worship and glorify. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge no baptism for forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Almighty eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, first accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now using the form of page 360, if you're able to kneel, please kneel for confession. That's our sin to God in name. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thanks for um, the kids. Um, what age group? Right? Yeah. It's, 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 it's sexually validated medical sex. So she was being there. So she had gotten so far with kids. And she wanted to see that. Yeah. And Ron, she has a bunch of like little Joey lines. I don't know if it's She got tablets for Eli.
the Eucharistic Prayer A begins on page 361 of the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven, lighting upon the dis disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples in many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to him and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption of Father in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. At the last day, bring us with all your saints in the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by Him and with Him and in Him, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as we say, Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. The following prayers for those who are watching this service from home or in a rerun and cannot now receive the sacrament. In union, dear Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church where your blessed body and blood are being offered to the Father, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I believe that you are truly present in the holy sacrament 
And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself unto you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Let me never be separated from you. Let me live and die in your love. The gifts of God to the people of God. Take the merch of Christ die for you. And feed them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. to come up to the altar rail to receive the sacrament. If you're baptized, you may receive the sacrament. If you're not baptized, please come up for a blessing, but please come to the rail.
Turning page 365, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God which passes on understanding, keep your hearts and minds and knowledge and love of God and his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And bless you, God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you today and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.